to the men, the men of the moment. Um, it is none other than Dr. Tankiso Lizeli, and then I will quickly introduce him to you as follows. Dr. Tankiso Lizeli, um, he is he was ordained actually to pastoral ministry in August 1998 and has served God in the Trans Orange Conference, South, Southern African Union Conference, and currently serving at Helderberg College of Higher Education in Somerset, Western Cape in South Africa. He is married, of course, to, to Ms. Duduzile for the last 34 years, and both have presented two adults uh, children, their names is Tabiso, who is 30 years of age, and Deboho, 23 years. His passion includes beholding the beauty of Jesus Christ, his family, serving and sharing the gospel. He has served God for 31 years. He is praying and looking forward to sharing God's gift under the theme of grace and peace with all of us during this week. So therefore, this is, I'm presenting to you, our presenter, our facilitator for this week, that is uh, Dr. Tanki Solitzeli. God has used, used him before, and I believe he will do the same even today. So having said that, mine is very simple. It's just to lay that red holy carpet unto you and make sure that you take us to the highest spiritual ring, my, my, my leader. So this is time, this is your time. Over to you, Dr. Tankiso Lizeli. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister, for the kind uh, welcome. And it's indeed a privilege for me to participate in this ministry uh, around this time. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless us. I've been following the, I've been blessed last week by um, the ministry of uh, uh, Pastor uh, Mabenge, Planty Mabenge, and also the previous week, uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Exen. And I believe that the Lord will all continue to bless us as we, as we share his word together. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you uh, because I have quite a number of passages that I want to share with you. And uh, um, that I will be speaking this morning on the topic of the grace and peace from the divine trio or from the Trinity. Uh, this, this morning I will be simply saying, I will be, say, I will be introducing the source, the fountain of this grace and peace. I, I need to put them at their place uh, before we can talk about the grace and peace. Uh, the passage that I've chosen uh, for this morning, it's Revelation chapter one, verse four and five. Revelation chapter four, verse four, chapter one, verse four and five. It reads, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is coming. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse 5, even from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. May God continue to bless the reading of his word now and forevermore, amen. The passage that I've chosen comes from the book of Revelation. And this is the book that I, this is a gift from God to the Seventh-day Adventist church, to the remnant, to those that are preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, and, and uh, the gift of grace and peace come from the Trinity. If you notice the way they are described, the first one, he who is and who was and who is coming, this is God the Father. And from the seven spirits, this is the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit who is standing before the throne. And verse five, and also from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, 
the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Now, the book of Revelation does not do what we do, doesn't argue Trinity. It simply assumes Trinity. So we, we are simply told that we have these three personalities who are the source and the fountain of grace and peace. So today I will not, I will not be talking about grace and peace. I will do it as, we, as, as, the we, as the week unfolds. But I want to introduce the three, the source, the fountain, the, 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 the very people who manufacture this grace and peace. And uh, the, 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 the one who is the father, then the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ himself. Now, I'll be saying other things about them. Uh, think about a trio. You know, a trio, they always stand in a certain way when they sing a certain song. I want you to mark that. I want you to mark the sequence of how they are standing whenever they, when they present grace to us, when they are the source of grace, like in this passage, when they are the source of grace, this is how they stand. The God, the Father, first, then the Holy Spirit, then Jesus Christ. This is how the trio is standing. And you will soon notice that I will be reading some passages to see how they stand whenever they do a certain function. When they dispense grace and peace, this is how they stand. The Father stands first, then you have the Holy Spirit in the middle, then you have Jesus Christ. Now, this is the formula. This is the formula that you'll see. But now you will notice that the configuration, the standing arrangement, just like a trio, you know, whenever the trio sings, whether it is a group, the, the way they stand is determined by the song that they are going to sing. It depends where the melody is, who, who will be doing the leading in this song. So they stand according to that arrangement. Now, in this case, the Father is standing, he's the first one. In the middle, you have uh, the Holy Spirit. The third one is, the, is Jesus Christ. And, and, and if you notice in the, in the uh, epistles, you see this when they talk about grace, uh, when Paul 13 times, when he talks about good, uh, grace and peace. And, and now of interest, Paul, John, and, and, and other epistles mostly Depending on the song that is being sung at that time, they would always, some, uh, for instance, Paul would always mention uh, Jesus Christ and the Father, or the Father and Jesus Christ, depending on what is being dispensed, depending on the gift that is being given. But the passage that we have read, whenever grace and peace in the book of Revelation, whenever they give salvation, whenever they talk about the washing of our sins, making us kings and queens, making us a priesthood of believers, washing their sins. Whenever they do that, whenever they dispense peace and grace, they stand together, God, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, then the Holy Spirit, then Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is in the middle. Now, I want to be reading some of the passages of interest. I want you to be watching the sequence, the standing arrangement, and I will be showing the standing arrangement. And after that, I will also show as to what is it that they are doing at that time, given their standing arrangement. Now you notice in the passage that we've read, you have the Father, you have the Holy Spirit, and you have Jesus Christ. And both of them are the fountain, the source of grace. And uh, they do the function of making us kings and queens. They make us a priest. They make us a priesthood of all believers, and they wash our sins. Now, let's continue and see this. Now, if we go to the, the book of Matthew, when they are baptizing, remember when we are baptized, we are always, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit. Notice the arrangement now. You have the Father, you have the Son in the middle. And you have the Holy Spirit on the, on, uh, on, uh, as the third person. And when we receive the baptism, when we are baptized, or when we administer baptism to others, this is the standing arrangement. And the, 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 the message is, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Notice the sequence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The passage that we read, uh, Revelation 1, verse 4 and 5, the arrangement was the Father, the Holy Spirit, and, the, and Jesus Christ. Now let's follow that. Let's, let's continue following. No, notice Matthew 3, verse 6, 3 and 6. Matthew 3, 16 to 17. Now the context of this, it is Jesus Christ is being baptized. Uh, let me read this passage. And when Jesus, Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the, the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Now notice the sequence. Notice the sequence. The sequence is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. Now the trio has changed the configuration. When, the, when, when, when Jesus Christ is being baptized, when Jesus Christ is preparing for the ministry, when he's preparing for the work of salvation, when he's preparing for the work of preaching the gospel, when he's preparing to go to the cross, this is the configuration. This is how the, the Trinity stands. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. You notice this is the story as it unfolds in that, in that passage. Now let's follow, let's follow this. Let's follow this. Remember what we are doing this morning was simply introducing, was simply introducing the very fountain, the very source of this grace and peace. John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now notice in this sentence, in this passage, uh, John 14, verse 26, you find mentioned all of them. But the first one, notice the sequence again. The Holy Spirit is mentioned first and the Father and Jesus Christ. Now the, the, the trio is standing in a, certain, in a certain way. Why are they doing this? Because they're introducing the Holy Spirit who was going to come the, after, after Jesus Christ had departed. And he was going to teach and bring to memory or remind us, remind the disciples and also remind us who would hear the gospel from the disciples of all that Jesus Christ had taught. Now notice the sequence, notice the sequence. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. Now the context here is when they give the gifts, the spiritual gifts to the churches. Notice how Paul describes this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 4 to 6. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are vari varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Now, this is the this is where they talk about the, the, the this is where Paul highlights the gifts of the Spirit, the spiritual gifts. But notice the sequence: the Holy Spirit first, because remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who's gifting us. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. And, and notice the benefits that we're getting. We receive spiritual uh, gifts for the ministry and also for edifying the church, for empowering the church. So this is, the con this is how they stand. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. Now let's continue. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Paul says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, this is the prayer that, that, that Paul is, 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 is uttering. Notice how he describes the standing arrangement. It is Jesus Christ, it is God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And, and whenever we pray, requesting for, 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 for the grace of God, now notice, Many times we think that because God, God did not die for us, God the Father did not go to the cross. Many times we think that he is, he, it is his anger that is being appeased. But notice this verse, the grace comes from, from Jesus Christ and it also comes from God himself and the love that comes from God. 
and also the fellowship that we get from the Holy Spirit. So this is, this are, these are the privileges. These are the benefits that we get. We get to receive grace from Jesus Christ. We get to receive love from the Father and also the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always with us. Now let's go to another passage again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. This is Paul again. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Notice the, the, the sequence. Begins with the Holy Spirit, then Jesus Christ, then God the Father. And, and, and Paul is saying this to show that the three of them, the three, the trio, protect us. They protect us. They dwell in us. And they work in us and through us to accomplish their purpose. And while they're working through us, we also get the benefits. While the water goes through a pipe, the water of life reaching out to the dry, to spiritually dry people, the pipe itself receives the benefits of the living water. So Jesus Christ, the, the Holy Spirit and the Father protect us. They do that function. Notice again, they are standing together, but the configuration is different. They stand in a certain way when they baptize. They stand in a certain way when they do other, other ministries. We go again to first, first Peter 1, verse 2. First Peter 1, verse 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. All of them are mentioned in the, in the, in the letter of Peter. God the Father is mentioned. The Holy Spirit who is sanctifying us is mentioned. And also Jesus Christ who we, we should obey and also through his blood we are saved. And, and, and we, 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 we get an, the same theme, the gift of grace and also the gift, the gift of, of peace. And the sequence, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. And, and this is where we receive the sanctification. This is where we receive uh, the power to keep us from falling. Or whenever we fall, that power restores us. And we also get sealing. We are being sealed because we are God's property and we receive the grace and peace. Now, we will be talking about grace and peace. Grace is something that happens outside of us and peace is something that happens in us. Once we behold the grace of God at the cross, something happens in us and that something that is happening in us is activated by the Holy Spirit. Remember, he would come to teach and to show us what Christ is doing. Luke chapter one, verse 35. Notice, I want, to, I want you to pay attention to this passage. This is when uh, Gabriel approached Mary with the instruction that Mary was going to be the host of the Messiah. And, 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 and Mary had just asked the question, I'm not married, I'm a little girl. Yes, I have, I'm seeing someone, but we're not married yet. Yet, how will this happen? How will this happen? Now, notice what Gabriel, how, how Gabriel describes how what is going to be happening to Mary. Luke 1, verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Notice there's a sequence, the Holy Spirit the father and then the birth of Jesus Christ. So that in the birth, in the conception of Mary, in the conception of Jesus Christ, in the birth of Jesus, the Holy Spirit came and overshadowed Mary. And, 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 and God himself also descended, God the father descended. And, and in that, I don't know what they were doing, but they were around Mary. Mary was overshadowed by the divine trio. 
and, 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 the, and, 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 and Gabriel explains the outcome. He says, for that reason, when that happened, Mary, there will be a holy child who shall be born and his name will be called the son of God. Now the sequence, the Holy Spirit, because he's active, the father and Jesus Christ. Notice the Holy Spirit is active when it, during our spiritual birth. And the Holy Spirit was active when Jesus Christ was about to be born. So what, what do we benefit from this? We received the substitute. When Christ came, he came to be our substitute. He came to offer us salvation. He came, he became a human being. He was fully human. He was like us. And that's why the Bible refers to him as our elder brother. And, and this is important. It depends who you know when you go to heaven. We have someone who looks just like us in heaven. We have someone who's fully God, who's also fully human. So that we can relate to the one who is in, who, who is in heaven. But this is what happened when Mary was about to conceive, when Mary was about to host the Messiah. Romans 15 verse 30. Now notice this passage. Paul says, now I urge you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. And, 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 and Paul is saying, Paul is pleading. Now, we would not even expect Paul to ask the brethren to pray for him. We would not expect him to ask the church to pray for him. But notice, Paul was one of us, he had the same needs, the spiritual needs. He, he's begging the church. He's saying, I urge you, brethren, I'm, I, I'm urging you, a, a household of believers, uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. He's, he's mentioning all of them, but notice the sequence. He mentions Jesus Christ first, then the Holy Spirit, then the Father. And, 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 and this is what we remember. Remember, when you have the trio in the same sentence, there is always a blessing towards us. It's always a blessing to us. Once the three of them are in the sentence, we receive salvation. Once the three of them are in the same sentence, it doesn't matter how the sequence, but the sequence keeps on changing we always get the benefits. In this case, Paul pleading with the saints to pray for him, pleading for intercession, intercede for me, please pray for me, pray for me to Jesus Christ, pray to me, uh, to, to, to the Holy Spirit, pray to the Father. I need this, I need this. And, and this is a lesson to us. Have them lined up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the passage and present your request to all of them. I get the impression that the three of them are in the business of saving us. They are in the business of blessing us. They are in the business of having an interest even in the little things in our lives. Ephesians chapter two, verse 18. This is Paul again. For through him, that is Jesus Christ, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. For through him, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So Paul is saying, the Father is not out of bounds. Through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Remember, Paul would always say, our prayers are like groanings. We don't know what we should be praying for. That's why the, 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 the Holy Spirit will take our prayers and repackage them as our mediator, as our helper, as our comforter. Repackage our prayers and present them as real prayers to, to, to the Father. The, what is the benefit? We can all access the Father through the merits of Jesus Christ. Not through our own merits. We don't approach Father and say, Father, we deserve to be here because we have repented. We deserve to be here because we return tithe. No, we approach the Father, not because of our righteousness, but we approach the Father through the merits 
of Jesus Christ. And, and, and the whole story is repackaged by the Holy Spirit so that it becomes a good perfume to the Father when he listens to our prayers. Now, here's another passage, Jude, Jude, uh, uh, Jude has one chapter, verses 20, the second part of verse 20 up to 21. Praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Notice he includes prayer and keeping ourselves in the love of God and also doing all this while we are waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of them are, are mentioned praying in the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit does the work of taking our prayers. And, and remember when Christ ascended, he sent the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and be his representative. Now, when we pray the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and while we are praying, we should remain in the love of God. Must not leave the family of God. We remain in the love of God and, and anxiously waiting in the mercy for the soon return of Jesus Christ. We are assisted by the Holy Spirit. We remain in the love of God and we await for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And all of them are there. Notice the sequence, the Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus Christ. The trio keeps on changing the position depending on the mission that they are engaged in. Now I'm going to be reading the last passage, the last passage, Acts chapter two, verse 33. Now this is a very important passage because the events that are taking place in Acts chapter, chapter two are parallel to the events that are taking place in the book of Revelation chapter five. I'm going to be reading this, this passage. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 20, 33. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he that is Jesus Christ has poured forth this which you both see and hear. Now, what was the, what was the background to this? It was during the Pentecost. You remember during the Pentecost, Christ had ordered them to remain in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. They had to remain in Jerusalem. And while they were there, they pleaded forgiveness. They made peace with each other. You'll remember prior to the death of Jesus Christ, prior to ascending, prior, prior, to, prior to transfiguration, the disciples who were squabbling, were, 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 were fighting, were, were preoccupied about position. Who's going to be great in the kingdom of God? And they lost sight of the mission which Christ had come to accomplished. And, and while they were in the upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit, they made things right with God and they made things right with each other. And the Holy Spirit descended upon them. And Peter arose and he preached that day. And now Peter is explaining what is taking place is explaining to those that are listening, those that are saying, what's wrong with you? It's early in the morning. Are you, are you drunk already? Peter is saying, no, we are not drunk. And he says, therefore, having been exalted, he talks about Jesus, having been exalted to the right hand of, the, of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he that is Jesus Christ has poured forth this which you both see and hear. Peter is saying, what you see, what you hear, it's something that has happened between the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Now, what was taking place in heaven? Jesus Christ was being inaugurated. He was being glorified in heaven. And while he was being glorified, you remember the context was that story, who's worthy to, to, or to take the book from the one sitting on the throne? And Jesus Christ was found to be worthy. And he went, he approached the the throne and he took the scroll which had seven seals and sealed and he opened that scroll and and the, the the passage said he opened it because he was found to be worthy of opening that because of the death that he that he chose for the humanity and when he opened that scroll he immediately sent the holy spirit to the earth heaven is installing Jesus Christ as the high priest, high priest. On earth, Peter and the disciples 
are experiencing a Pentecost. There is, a, there is an event on earth. There is another event on, in heaven. In heaven, Christ is being inaugurated. On earth, the Holy Spirit is being received. And he came right at the middle of Peter's sermon. Whilst Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit descended. And uh, Peter said, said to people who were watching, he said, what you see is actually what was promised. He told us that when he's exalted at the right hand of God, he, he and the Father will send the promise of the Holy Spirit. So what you see is what is actually happening in, in heaven. And it is what was promised. And what happened during that day? The, the passage, the scripture, the book of Acts mentions that during Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit arrived in the middle of Peter's sermon, that day alone, that day alone, 3,000 people were converted through the power of the Holy Spirit. Actually, the book of Acts is the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The four Gospels are the Acts of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation is the book of the Acts of Jesus Christ in saving the world and the Acts of the Holy Spirit working within the churches. Again, we see Jesus Christ, we see the Father, and the Holy Spirit. There is action in heaven. There is an event in heaven. There's also action on earth. And the two actions are parallel to one another. Jesus Christ in heaven is being glorified. On earth, the Holy Spirit is arriving to take over that promise that Jesus Christ made. After when I'm glorified, I will send the Holy Spirit, the helper, who will be the comforter, who will represent me. He will teach you about everything. He will convict you of sin. He will convict you of righteousness. He will prepare you. He will make you understand everything that I taught you. Now, when we come to the end, when the three members of the Godhead are in the sentence, there are measureless blessings upon us. When the three members of the Godhead are in our prayers, there will be majorless blessings. And may God bless us this morning. May God remind us that the three of them are all out in the business of saving and blessing and preparing us for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. May, may the Lord bless you this morning. Amen. Amen, 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 my pastor, for that sharing. Um, that was powerful. Him who is and who was and who is coming and from the seven spirit which are before his throne. Thank you so much for explaining the sequence of Trinity to us and even, you know, the, the introduction of the source of grace, which is basically the theme for the week. So we are grateful for explaining the Trinity and I can only say hallelujah for the benefits of Trinity in our lives. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, my pastor. We are blessed on that note due to the um, you know, time constraints. Um, 